Welcome. Welcome back, guys, to another episode with the two of us. This week, we're going to cover a question that get, we get asked a lot. And we thought, why not share it out? Because obviously, it's a pretty important um, question and a pretty important answer to it. So, let's jump straight into it. Proudly brought to you by iCheck TPMS. Okay, hello. Um, got a glass of Coke. I have had two of these. I just being honest. How are you? Hope you're all okay <coughs> and enjoying whatever you're up to. But. A question that we get asked a lot, and, and, and a serious question, guys, is traveling with your pet. And we are going to cover traveling with a dog, because that's what we got. Now, a lot of people have cats, birds, etc. But this is mainly about dogs, because, well, we've only got a dog. Seuss. And that's the most important question, really, is about your dog. Because whether or not yes. you should travel with your dog depends a lot on your specific dog now we're not going to say should or shouldn't you travel with a dog maybe what we talk through here in um this, in this episode you can sort of have a feel for it at the end um you know we we, we opt to travel with the dog because well we don't have kids and he brings us a lot of joy and sometimes sometimes he's <laughs> been a menace today we, where are we um we're on the gib river road we have had um, a pretty pretty full on day. We have had a full on day, and We've, Bobby has been full on the oh, entire day. But anyway, we'll jump into the first one. You got to ask yourself: Will your dog suit the travel life? So, you know, like, has you have you had your dog at home for the last ten years, and now you want to up and jump into a caravan and move around the country? And that also goes down to: Is it temperament? <laughs> yes, beautiful. I got it right. Did the thing. Um, like, is it anxious? So while while we say that, we had a pug back in South Africa. Shame he did come over um, to Australia with us, but unfortunately he's no longer here. He did not travel well at all. And when we say that in a car, I couldn't even drive down the road to the to the to the stop sign or to the traffic light, and he'd get sick. And it would just be ongoing. So he struggled with motion sickness. So he literally had no go travel sickness. It, so it was no go. you know, if we had him now, oh, it, it wouldn't uh, <laughs> it wouldn't end well in um, a matter of five minutes. So that's what we mean about that. Like moving around, side to side, environments change. So like here today, there tomorrow, on the beach, in the bush. How well will your pup or your, your your pet adapt to that. Now, some dogs may not adapt to that, and they just like to be in the yard on a farm or yeah. wherever you guys Especially are. Especially if they're so, anxious. If you've got an anxious yeah. animal, it's a whole different story traveling with them. And also, um, be trained to be on a lead, because most places ask that your dog stays on a lead. Um, Bob's no... He's on a lead, but he's no good on it. Um, we have tried. He's been a pup since we got him in this van. So you would think that slowly but surely he, this is, this would be his normal day-to-day -day thing. We actually had a bit of a giggle today. If we have to go back to uh, when we finished traveling, and, and, and it's going to be chaos for our neighbors because Bob has been around us 24-7, or at least most of the time. So being left at home while we have to go to work, is good. Oh, he will cross that bridge later happy to spend time alone because sometimes you're going to need to you might have to go to the amenities for a shower and um, if you've got a highly anxious dog or a dog that's got separation anxiety they're going to be barking and howling and crying and then 
training on commands recall. So Bob has accidentally got off a lead, and that's because the the lead maybe just got jammed from the sand or something, and he's got off, or <laughs> he's pulled the lead around and he shot off with the lead. So and he's wriggled out of his harness. Yeah. So we've tried we try and train him to to recall, and it, we we have been. He's actually been quite good. We've been getting little wins with recall. But yes. he is 14 months old and it's taken 14 months and many hours Here of training is. for him to slightly catch on to the recall. Yeah. So I think that's quite a big one to start with. Like your dog needs to be happy in environments, not like you can travel in a car. You can spend hours in a car. We've spent <coughs> up to 12 hours. You can spend an hour. Depending on how far you want to travel, but I'm sure you get what we what, what we're saying. And very importantly, we spoke about sort of if you've got an anxious dog, the one thing about travel is that you're around a lot of different people, children, other animals, so they need to be quite social in terms of happy to be around other people, children and animals, because it doesn't matter what type of a campsite you're in, you're generally going to have people around I've got to say you. one thing I've learned, and someone said this to the, us the other day. French Bulldogs tend to play a little bit different to normal dogs. He, uh, he thinks he, he's a kangaroo. He, he is totally different. But Bobby's actually quite good, and he, he does tend to jump a little bit. That's something we still haven't got right. But anyway. <laughs> big ticket item is accommodation. So obviously, you're traveling on the road. You're staying in different types of accommodation all the time. You need to really do your research and plan ahead when you're traveling with a dog because only certain accommodation is dog friendly. Van parks that are dog friendly and look you find caravan parks that are dog friendly it's just a case it may not be the specific one you want to stay in and it may be slightly more expensive than the one you want to stay in but that's your option. Um, and also remembering that caravan parks are quite strict when it comes to dogs. So as Derek was saying you have to have them on a leash they can't be barking or loud or disturbing the people around you. Um, so that's why you always get the disclaimers at the caravan parks about the rules around dog ownership. Um, free camps. Free camps are generally more dog friendly than caravan parks. Uh, meaning dog friendly doesn't mean that your dog has to be off a lead. Yeah. Still, gen still has to be on a lead. I mean, it's great to let your dog off for a bit. Don't get us wrong. Like, you know, we... You know, when there's no one around, we'll let Bobby run off for a bit, and, and, and that's where we're saying he's coming back to us, which is good. And But generally, mostly, like, the dog needs to be on a lead. And that's just one of the laws you just got to follow and accept. Yeah. And farm sales are also great and generally yep. very dog-friendly. And the way we find um, dog-friendly sites is using an app. Yep. So we use Campedia. You basically use the filter for pet-friendly and... It'll, it'll show you all the camps, whether they're caravan parks, free camps, um, farm stays, showgrounds, and it'll tell you whether or not you can have your animal with you. Now, when we say, like, dog's going to be on a lead, what we try and do is when you go to, the, like, bigger towns, they'll have an off-lead dog area, off, yeah, off-leash dog area or whatever they yeah, call it. The we, 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 we look it up and... Um, if there's one in town, we'll take Bobby there and we do the right thing and he let him run run amok. He loves in, it. He loves it. And yep. um, we'll throw a ball or whatever it is that he's got with him. So You might want to talk about the next one. Which Are is... we that far down already? Yeah. Oh, wow, we're flying through this. National Parks. Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom. <laughs> Big no, no. <laughs> Don't know if there's a National Park you're allowed to take a dog in. But please check because if you're driving through a national park and you're not stopping, I do believe you're allowed to keep the dog in the car and keep going if you're not stopping. Now, the while we know that is when we travel, especially through the Flinders Ranges, you were allowed to have the dog at that Scar Willows. We had Sophie back then and I asked the question when we rung. I said, well, how do I get to you because I need to drive through the Wolfina National Pound. Park. No, no, it was, or through Wolpina. They, was, they were told, yeah, you can actually drive as long as you don't stop. So please don't, like, check on that first before because some states are different. It limits you really heavily when it comes to travel. Nas yeah. 
So this is the big one. A lot of people, I mean, we're traveling through um, Western Australia at the moment and we were actually chatting about what areas we haven't been able to see because of national parks. And there have been a fair few. Like, there have been a fair few. I'll tell you what, number. WA has been the most difficult yeah. one and the most wanted to visit. Yeah. We had someone reach out to us actually um, from um, New Zealand a few months ago, I think it was, asking us they want to come over to Australia and travel Australia for a year, I think it was. And they were contemplating actually bringing their dog with them from New Zealand. And we just said, look, if you, it's, it, it is difficult. And WA has really been a tough one. Number one, we only managed to find one or two dog sitters throughout the whole state. Yeah. Um, that's most probably um, also us not being prepared enough. Yeah. Phoning ahead. Because they are there, but they're just fully booked. Yep. Um, so if you do want to visit national parks, you can still travel with a dog. But make sure that you're planning ahead and you're arranging care for your dog so that you can actually travel into the national parks whether it's a day trip or overnight because the national parks are beautiful some of the top sites are there they're low cost but you just can't stay there with a the dog full stop look for a dog sitter when we went into early beach we used a dog sitter when and we actually found a dog sitter in Uluru with sophie yeah and um that was a bonus uh we, we we're busy traveling the gib now we weren't going to do it brown and hardy said that look after pop and so far it's working out all right we're taking a bit longer to do the gib because we're alternating between days so we're staying at a um, place two to three days and sue works in the morning they go off in the morning to go to say a gorge or to whatever they want to do amazing and then when they get back if there's enough time in the afternoon myself and sue go and we <coughs> leave bobby here with them because number one it's super hot and it's mostly national parks on this side. So, and we're staying in camps that actually allow dogs. So we're not but trying that, to be on the sly either. That said, state parks are quite often dog friendly. So it's really important to get online and check which parks do allow you to have dogs and which don't. Because there is a difference between the national parks and the state. We've stayed in a number of state parks with yeah. both Sophie and Bobby and it hasn't been an issue. Moving on. <laughs> I might take this one. Are we boring you? I know this, but we needed to do this one. Yeah, we did need to do one with traveling traveling with dogs. I'll do this one because it's technical. Oh, this, this is, is dog. This, this is, is animal technical. So this it'll is come not over for me. This is not for me. I'm going to just sit back and listen so I can learn as well. Yeah. So it's about pet visits. And obviously a big part of being an, uh, a pet parent is that vet visits are required so you've obviously got all your annual vaccinations that you need to keep up to date um, as well as emergency visits so it's something you need to plan for to ensure that you are in an area that has a vet clinic or a veterinarian available for your annual vaccinations and they are incredibly important when you are traveling can i just pop in there quickly i was probably going to mention this because i haven't i don't know this one Sometimes when you take your dog into a kennel or a dog sitter, they ask, actually ask you for the vaccination. For the vaccination. So Bob's little book's yeah. got to go with him. Correct. Very so that's well why we've got to stay up to date with all this stuff, you know? Yeah. So you've got to keep your vaccination card or your, your VAC certificate so you can prove that they're vaccinated. Um, also, certain states have requirements for specific vaccinations. So two of those are Far North Queensland and Tasmania. They have specific parasites illnesses ticks that require certain vaccinations really yeah absolutely so when we go. were in far north queensland bob had to have um i think it was leprosiasis i don't know if i'm saying that right but it was an additional vaccination that he had to have um before we went to far north queensland so those are your annual vaccinations the other thing is obviously emergency visits which no one ever wants to happen with your pet Anyone. At any time. But it can be really challenging when you're on the road because you're not necessarily always near help. So that actually, we were near help. Sophie got quite ill when we were in um, Ely Beach. Yeah. And we managed to get her through to the local vet and the local vet basically said to us, we can't help her because of the breed of dog. She was an English bulldog. You need to get to Townsville, and you need to get to Townsville fast. So, yeah, we had to well, sort of stop and pray and, and, and just drive to Townsville from Ely Beach, which was about three and a half hours. So. Yeah, and um, I think it was two nights in a hotel while Sophie was in hospital, 
and um, it's just something you've got to prepare for um, which also requires you know cash to look after them um, because there's a cost associated with that we're not um, trying to scare you we just thought we'd let you know from our experience traveling with a dog for three well, and a half years please. so don't like so we're trying to be the party police be we just thought we need to cover these things because yeah. you need to know about this like Sue said an extra bit of money people ask us do we have like an emergency fund that if you break down or one of us need to go to hospital or yeah. something like that? Well, you yeah. need more because of the dog as well. Yeah. So we do have pet insurance and look, we have pet insurance because of the breed of dogs that we have. We have bulldogs and they are known to have um, various complications. Breeding issues, yeah. heart problems, skin problems, They've heart got it problems. All. They've got it all. So but, pet insurance is a good idea. But, but pet insurance is a bit of a... Still, you've got it, but you've got to pay it first to claim it. Yeah, correct. So it's not like... Again, uh, it's cash flow. Yeah, it's cash flow. So when Sophie was really ill in Townsville, the drive to Townsville, the two nights that myself and Sue stayed in a... Um, sort of just the cheapest hotel we could find because we didn't take the van. We left the van in Ellie Beach with some friends. And... So if he was in hospital, that that was a four thousand dollar turnaround, but we claimed it and we got eighty percent of that back. Yeah, and so. if you're not a pet insur insurance person, just make sure, as Derek said, you got a bit of a kitty. You know, if you're putting money in every month, that you do have cash flow to attend to that. As an example, I don't want to bring it up because it's quite it's it, it's heart heartbreaking for us. When so if you got had to get put down, when we took a ring. Although we had pet insurance, they wanted ten thousand dollars up front on the counter. Yeah. Before they even look at before they even started the operation on Sophie. It's not that we didn't want to pay the money, it was that the, the wasn't good. Yeah, and the percent the percent of surviving wasn't very high. So yeah. that but was our reason. But that's just something that I thought I'd throw out there. Yeah. Alright, I'm next. What have I got? Oh <laughs> it's still terribly exciting though. Oh. I've got to, I've got to try and show that I know some of this, otherwise people are going to think. <laughs> All right, my turn. Keeping your dog safe. Picking, grooming. We try wash Bobby, mate. You must see <laughs> what he looks like. So on the gib, it's very the the, it's very dusty. <laughs> it's like bull dust, and he, if you don't know, Frenchies love a bit of a zoomy, or they call him. Yeah. And he was doing that the other night. He was kicking out that much dust. If I just gave him a little pat, the dust would just come off of him. So we try and wash. Like, I know already, kind of know if they've got a dog wash, he goes in. We try our best. And then maybe somewhere down the line, we will even pay to take him in for grooming. Because, you know, you've got to try and, you know, we're all on a water shortage going across the gib as we speak. Yeah. Um, you, we, we try our best. He goes into the fresh creeks, the little creeks here, and has a swim. But the problem is when he's wet, he rolls around again in that um, bull dust, but he loves it. But yeah, keep dog clean, you know, just 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 normal like yeah. you would do at home. Um, tick and flea. Big so topic. what we do is, um, you know, if we're in an area like Cape York or here or anywhere we're going, where we're going a bit more bush, we'd go in and ask the vet what's the best collar, tick and flea collar for yeah. probably that area but generally it comes back that one it's we got Soresto. Yeah, yeah Soresto yeah. yeah so he gets one of those on and we try our best he also has his tick and flea treatment so yes. his tablet every month um we carry around so I don't know much. tick and flea shampoo that we do wash him down with so if you're in an area that's known to be really bad every four days you basically just sponge them um, with it, and the other thing you do is regularly check them. Oh no, sorry, sir, because I can take over now. Yeah, because I know. This but this one. is important. I know, no, 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 I know, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. So what uh, the vet told me once, because I took it was Sophie back then, is quite often you should rub your hands around the back of their ears, down the neck, behind under their arms, all over in general, but mainly concentrate on those little areas because they said that. Your, your hands, your feeling has memory. So we, we were lying in bed the other night and Sue was just like doing, feeling Bob a bit and going behind his ears and we found it, but it was a scab. So he's obviously just scratched himself open. But it's funny because if you do, if you do it all the time, 
you will know if there's something has changed. And um, that's what a vet told me about ticks and also okay. like lumps as well. I mean, we have to talk about these things. It's not very nice. Next one, I got this one. I bought this. Sunscreen. <laughs> when we got Bobby. You missed one. No, did I? Yeah, worms. Deworming. Take over. <laughs> What's that so, one? Deworming. I just carry around a pack of his deworming tablets. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and he has one tablet every three months. Okay. Continue, but make sure that you do carry the deworming tablets yeah. with you. Sunscreen. Depending on the dog's breed, we got a little... I'll put up on the screen here if I can find it. Um, it's a little like roll-on sunscreen for dogs. I got it at um, the pet barn, I think it was. We put it on his nose because um, it can get sunburned. So, I know I, I, I was like, there's sunscreen for a dog, like the first time I ever knew about it. And uh, I, very important, actually. So we're talking about keeping a dog safe. Heat. Got it. Picked up. Ding, ding. <laughs> light bulb. Boom. Heat. So, with also, the breed of dog is, 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 Bob is getting hot up here. We woke up in the morning. Now, look, we can run the aircon off grid, but because we're traveling and we're trying to save water, it's hard to keep the solar panels clean. I might just get some water out the creek tomorrow and do that. But we could run the aircon if we wanted to. And we got the, the, the windows open, the fans going, the hatches open, everything like that. And Bob is even still getting hot at like 7 o'clock in the morning. So uh, ways you can do that is get like cooling pads. We carry a little stand-up fan. So when he's lying on his bed, one of those little rechargeable fans, there's a fan blowing on him. We've got three Sirocco's in this van. And what else is the other one? monitor just just monitor the temperature like you know I, I i can see when bob's hot we've learned that he starts panting and we know and then we'll either wet his belly with a wet cloth difficult with sophie she she loved it she'd just lie down with a a, a wet rag on those cooling cloths over her tummy that kept her quite cool but bob, with bob keep still mate there's no go with him yeah like if you if you get to meet bob you'll understand yeah He's you amazing. can get a cooling collar you can also yes. use a spray bottle just to spray them with water. We're actually using the spray bottle the other night, um, other, uh, maybe yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Bob thinks it's a game, but at the yeah. same time we're cooling him. So it's just a yeah. cheap little spray bottle from the, the dollar store or whatever it is. Hose them down and plenty of fresh water. And the reason this is first on environmental factors is that heat is a killer for dogs. You have to be so careful when you're traveling. Caravans get super hot. Cars get super hot. You cannot leave them unattended in caravans and yeah. cars when it's when it's hot. hot like that and myself and Sue are traveling alone when like when we're in Broome um it's pretty hot up here and it's sort of coming into the hotter period we'll drive into town I'll sit in the car Sue goes out and does the groceries comes back and then we'll we'll swap over then Sue will sit in the car tag with the car team. tag tag team yeah also when you when it's hot like this we walk Bobby early in the morning like and I've got to say got a flannel one it's the weirdest thing i think it's because we like i gotta say the gib oh subscribe to the channel we've got some awesome epic content i don't give too much away but like you camp in these gorges and as soon as that sun it'll be 34 degrees and drops down to 27 degrees and it goes behind like a gorge or the mountain it drops 10 degrees and sitting outside having the iron tonight i got a bit chilly and i'm actually getting a bit hot but sorry um walk bobby early in the morning like super early like 6 6 30 or we wait for the evening like i just said like around that half past four five it tends to drop right off and then if there's a nice little shallow fresh creek for bobby oh, well, he, loves he loves it he'll just play around yeah. in a rock pool or or something like that so that's one thing we're walking the dog snakes now gotta be super careful we just met a couple last night that follow us and came over for a yarn and they said that there's lots of snakes on the cube and it's a bit, uh, a bit worrying it's a bit worrying <laughs> because i don't know how to identify a snake um we have a snake um first aid kit in the car I don't know if I could use that on a dog, to be honest. Like, I no. don't. We actually don't know. This is actually, maybe drop a comment in below without being, I should know, or you guys should know this. Like, we're all learning. Um, we would love to know. Obviously, crocs, dingoes, cane toads. Last night, there were cane toads everywhere. I actually almost pooped myself because I went out to get some water to put on the fire. <laughs> and they were around me. And I, I, I pooped myself. But, obviously, crocs. So, when we were around crocs, we keep Bobby on a lead. 
Keep uh, him away from away. the water. Bob should have a muzzle on. We can't sort of get one for a French Bulldog. Again, if you're traveling up, especially in WA, so what we do is we keep Bob on a very short lead and... That's because of the baits. Because of the baits, yeah. So the baits are super, super dangerous. And a lot of the national parks and national park areas use baits. So it's very important that you do your research. Also look out, there are there are warning signs if there are baits um, being used in an area. And you can also research online. You can actually look at bait maps to see whether or not... When we actually area. came across the bottom, we were traveling with friends of ours. And we were trying to find muzzlers and um, Sue was actually trying to have a look. And look, it's everywhere. Mm. Bob is a bit of a sniffer. Um, but we, a bit we, of a we, sniffer. we really try and watch. <laughs> he if vacuums he's, up anything I mean, he's around. So he has yeah. to be on a lead. So another tip with bait, keep your dog on a lead. Don't let them don't into the Don't like the bush areas, areas and stuff. Yeah. Like we don't, if Bob goes to the bush, I, 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 he, he's got to get out. And I've got to be able to see what's on the ground. Yeah. Like you can only try your best. But we are, you know, we are doing okay so far, and hopefully we get out of this all good. But he's, he, he also is starting to learn to listen. Yeah. If, he's, if we change our tone... It's taken a while. It's taken a while, <laughs> but hey, we are getting there. Oh, me. Sorry about that. Are you picking which way you want to talk about again? You literally are. Water. We got to, you got to be careful with water because there's parasites in the water. Um, some vets have warned us, so it, it's not like we asked them. You know, Bobby needed some more injections. We got back from Cape York because it, it was just time for some injections, and we went into the vet and they said be careful of the water because it can have parasites in it. Yeah, and because you're traveling so many different places, you've got different water sources. You actually don't know how good that water source is so make sure that it's like bottled if, i'm not going to drink water. um ball water so i'm going to give it to me dog yeah and french bulldogs generally have a very sensitive stomach as well yeah. so as soon as we change bob's food like it's it's all game <laughs> over um and his yeah his farts <sighs> that's why well you know, that's we the next topic is the food because that's yeah. something you've got to plan as well like we're on the trip um the give at the moment I'm not going to find dog food anywhere. So I've got to make sure that I've got enough dog food and I've got to make sure that I've got his specific dog food because he does have sensitivities. So there are plenty of places we can get it. We can actually buy it online um, through Pet Circle or Pet Barn and use the post office app, which is Parcel Collect, to have it delivered. Mm -hmm. But generally, in the local towns, the vets will carry the brand or alternatively, you know, if there's a, a Pet Barn, we can go and I'll just make sure that I've got enough for him to last the duration last one yeah i think this is your speciality no 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 last <laughs> one guys honestly pick up the dog poop oh here we go <laughs> carry bin ba the, the the poo bags we call them poo bags the um dog bags whatever you want to call them carry them on you we went all the way to <laughs> barnhill we parked the car at the top of the beach we went all the way down walked down like 500 meters across the beach bob decided it's time that was the spot sue goes i've left the poo uh the bags in the in the car to walk all the way back look i did it we got it we picked it up but carry and some I just stand bags. next to his poop while so I you go to pet barn they've got these nice little carriers that you can clip onto the uh, lead that they there all the time uh we carry quite a few of them there's some in the van there's some in the car in the canopy in the boat, everything, so we we, we, we can pick it up, and uh, that's a big one. There's all, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, yeah, we've been some places and it's just everywhere, so. I know you said it's the last one, but I've just got one more tip, because okay. I think it's quite important. Last, last one. Yeah, all right. So the last one is, make sure you travel with more than one lead and more than oh, one yeah. collar or harness, because picture this, you're in remote Cape York and the lead breaks. What do you do? Or the harness breaks. What do you do? Or the collar breaks. What do you do? Yeah. So it's always recommended that you've got two. Um, well, we do find the leads on the beach with the sand, the ones that retract. And we've bought the expensive ones from Pipe Barn. We bought the cheap ones. As soon as that sand gets in there, you can almost yeah. throw it away. We, you know, it, it's just oh, one of those Bobby things. So like two we, or three we carry two leads, two harnesses, because Bob pulls quite high, but it doesn't matter. The one might break, clip might break, or something like that, and then you're kind of like, 
you're kind of stuck. It's I carry two sets of thongs because I just know one was going to blow out on the gear, but then I can't get. <laughs> so I bought another pair for spare. Your feet so. look like you're not wearing thongs. No, guys, that's well, that's a quick chat about traveling with a dog. Like we said, it's not about we don't want to scare you. We feel that, that that we get asked this question a lot. Yeah. And that question is generally, should I take my dog? And that's that's a difficult. We can't answer we can't that, answer that for you. because. You, you, the dog might be 10 years old, 15, one year, whatever it is. Your dog is like your family. You know, so. It could be like your family and, and Bobby loves it. I think he's just living the dream just as like we are. So it's a hard one to answer. So if you, if you, if you listen to what we said and you get a feel for it and like I was saying, you know, maybe go away for a week or a weekend, take the That's dog. A good idea. Just have a bit of a feel, travel. Um, and, and see how it goes. Down. Little knock a shake down, yeah. And maybe you can get a feel for it. But we're happy to answer any questions you may have. So drop them in the comments below or reach out to us if you want to share something with us, you want to give us some advice, we would take it on. Um, so that's what we ask you to do in the comments and in, in or via Facebook or Instagram. So please reach out to us. But from myself, Sue and Bob, that's it. Have a you great guys, week. have a great week and we'll see you in the next episode. See ya.